back to my channel. So I haven't done a sewing tutorial in a little while and you guys have been requesting that I show you how to make the shorts that I wear all the time. And I've actually been meaning to make a new pair of shorts so I thought that'd be a great video idea. So I'm gonna do a slightly different style than the ones I always wear but hopefully you guys still like it. And this tutorial is a little bit more challenging so probably not for the beginner sewer but I'll try to do my best to explain how I usually make my shorts and give you guys measurements so you can do it yourself too. So I have this fabric and it's a really lightweight denim like fabric. So I think I'm going to make a pleated style short with a rolled hem. So it should be really cute. So I think we should just get started. So here's what you will need to make the shorts. So you're going to need fabric, scissors, measuring tape, good old pins, zipper, and your zipper can be too long but not too short. And for shorts, I usually buy a seven inch one, but I had this really long one laying around, so I'm using that. And then a yellow or gold colored thread for the classic denim top stitching. And I didn't show it because I didn't want to lug my huge machine down there, but you're also going to need a sewing machine and a buttonhole foot for this project. So the first thing you're going to do is of course lay out, measure, and cut all your fabric. So here are the front and back pieces for my shorts, and here are their measurements. So to adjust them to your own size, the important measurement for shorts is always the hip and the waist. So to find your own measurements, you're going to want to measure your hip, divide that measurement by four, and add two and a half inches to it. And you're going to repeat that same calculation for your waist measurement too. So for instance, my measurement for my waist was 26 inches, so I divided that by four, which is six and a half inches, and added two and a half inches to it for a total of nine inches for my waist. And when in doubt, always round up. You can always make it smaller, but you cannot make it bigger, and I learned that the hard way multiple, multiple times. And the waist measurement for this project is pretty big because we're going to be adding pleats, so it's okay if it's not exactly perfect because we're going to be fitting the waist on ourselves anyway. After you have that all measured and cut out, you're also going to need to cut out the pockets, the fly panel, and the waistband. And I always cut the waistband much longer than I'm going to need it to be because I have cut it too short before and then it's just a pain in the butt. So you can always cut it shorter, so make it super long. <laughs> and you shouldn't have to change any of these measurements. So the first thing you need to do is to take one of your front and back short pieces and put them together, making sure that the right sides are together, and then sew along the side seams and the leg seam. After you sew both of those, you're going to turn one of them right side out and put it inside of the other panel. And this part is like a little bit weird to get, but once you get it, it's not super hard to do. Then you're going to want to line up your seams, pin it, and sew all along the curved edge. But when you hit the little like flat panel on the front piece, you wanna just go straight and stop about six inches from the top. And so this is so we can add the fly at the front of the shorts. After that, it is time to try on our very rough shorts. So at this point, your shorts should look something like this. So right now, pins are going to be your best friend because these shorts are very big on us. So right now is the time to take in any areas of the shorts that look a little bit off. So I decided that I wanted the back of the shorts to fit a little bit more snugly, so I took that in. And then I also remembered that I have no hips, so I cut the curve of my shorts a little bit too curvy, so I decided to make that a little bit straighter. And so the trick to like pinning on yourself is really just putting in as many pins until it looks good and then we can fix it when we take it off. This is also the point when you want to fit the pleats to yourself. So you want to fold the pleats in towards the center of the shorts, not away from them, and fit them tight enough so they don't fall off your waist. And right now the pleats don't have to be very symmetrical or perfect at all because we can take them off and measure that stuff all out after we take the shorts off. This is just to make sure the pleats are going to look the way we want them to and that they fit well on our waist. So the first adjustment I decided to do was sew up the back. So I turned the shorts inside out, laid the seam that I had pinned down flat, and straightened out my pins before sewing the seam again. And to take in a seam like this, you basically just wanna start at the top how much you wanna take it in, and sew until you can blend in your new seam with the old one. Next, I decided that since I was going to take in the side seams anyway, I might as well sew in some pockets. So out of the same fabric, I roughly cut four pocket pieces, and here are their measurements. And then I took the pocket pieces and pinned and sewed one onto the side seams of each, the front and the back pieces of the shorts. So when you do this, you want to make sure that their pre sides are together, like always, and you want to make sure that they are all about an inch away from the top of the shorts. After that was sewed, I laid the pants and the pockets down flat, and then pinned and sewed the side seams of the shorts slightly down past where the pockets started, stopped there, and then continued sewing slightly above where the pockets ended, and sewed all the way down. And so this is so you can put your arm through the pocket hole. After that, I sewed around the perimeter of the pockets, and voila, you have pockets! Then I measured out the pleats to make sure I was taking in the same amount on both sides and that they were the same distance apart from the side seams. Then I flattened them out and top stitched them down about two inches from the waist. Next is time to put in the fly. So flies can be a little tricky to understand, but they really aren't that hard to actually put in. 
So next we want to put a base stitch up from where we stopped stitching around the center of the shorts. So you want to make sure that the base stitch goes straight up from where we stopped sewing and it stays about two and a half inches from the side of that front flap. And a base stitch is just the longest stitch on your machine and it's a very temporary stitch. So now you want to lay the seam down flat that we just sewed and it's time to take out your zipper. So you want to lay your down zipper with the front side of it towards the shorts and you want to put it on the left side of the seam we just sewed. And then sew along the side of the zipper that's farthest away from that seam, onto that front flap of the shorts. You also want to make sure that the top of the zipper is about half an inch down from the very top of the shorts. After you sew that, you want to fold the zipper towards the other flap, line it up straight, and sew the other side of the zipper to the other flap. And you want to make sure that you're stitching your zipper all the way down to where we started the base stitch, and if your zipper is too long like mine was, you can sew a few seams across the bottom of the zipper and snip off any excess. Now you can turn your shorts right side out, lay the flaps of the zipper towards the left side of the shorts, and pin and top stitch the classic fly shape onto the shorts. And this should be about an inch away from the center seam. After that you can take out your basting stitches and now you should have a fly! Next you want to take the fly flap that we cut out earlier, fold it in half and sew all the way around the curved edge all the way up. You want to make sure we leave the top edge open though so we can turn it out afterwards. You can also top stitch it to keep it flat. Then you want to sew the flap onto the inside of the fly so that when you unzip your fly it has a little panel there. Next I decided to do some top stitching around the side seams and down the center of the shorts so they would look more like jeans. Now it is time to put in the waistband! So I ironed my waistband in half and then I folded the raw edges in about half an inch or so. So when my waistband was folded it was about an inch and a half wide. Then I opened up my waistband and folded it in half and it looks a little weird that I'm sewing it here because obviously it's already one piece but I sewed a zigzaggy pattern along it so that when you folded it back up the waist would be taken in slightly. So you basically want to make a zigzag pattern that goes in slightly more at the center. Then I matched up that seam with the back of the shorts and marked where the waistband side seams were. Then I folded and sewed the waistband at the side seams that we marked basically the same way that I did the back so that again the waist would be slightly smaller than the rest of the waistband. Then I pinned those in place and marked where the waistband should end. Then I just sewed straight across the top of those for a finished edge. Then I lined up the waistband and sewed it all along the perimeter. Next I cut out some thin strips of excess fabric and then I finished the raw edge with a serger but you can use a zigzag stitch, folded the raw edges in and sewed the raw edges down so that they wouldn't be seen. Next I sewed the little strips that we made onto the back, onto the sides and onto the front sides of the waistband for belt loops. After that I finished up the top edge of the pockets, ironed all the raw edges in and pinned and sewed them onto the back of the shorts. And you basically just want to pin them wherever you think is right, try them on, make sure you like them and then sew around the perimeter making sure you leave the top open. Next I used my buttonhole foot on my machine to make a buttonhole on the left side of the waistband and if you don't know how to use a buttonhole there are like a thousand YouTube videos on how to do it and it's actually super super easy so don't be intimidated by it. And the last thing to do is roll up the hem of the shorts to a length that you like and then put some stitches across the side seams and the leg seams to hold them in place. And after that the shorts are officially done! And here are the finished shorts! I think these shorts are really cute and they really give me off those like vintage-y vibes with the whole like pleat and stuff. And I thought that the button I chose also kind of went the whole theme and I paired it with this really cute brown belt. I also wanted to show you guys what it looked like without the belt though so you can kind of get a better idea of it. And I really like this style. I think it looks super cute and I like wearing it high-waisted with a bunch of my shirts because I wear everything high-waisted nowadays. Also enjoy this fun little excursion I had while modeling these shorts. Okay, there's this little dove over there. I'm gonna see if I can like show you guys it. It's so cute. I hope he's still there. He's so precious. Ah! They're so cute. <laughs> I spooked them. I feel bad. They're so cute. <laughs> and now back to our regularly scheduled modeling. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I hope that you guys give these shorts a try and I post a video every Friday so you can hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos and all that jazz so I hope to see you again soon. Bye! Thanks for watching!